Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's video, we're gonna look at compound interest. It really is our superpower when it comes to building wealth. And so what we're gonna do is walk through seven really simple uh, compound interest calculations that will just demonstrate the awesome power uh, of compounding. And uh, I'm also going to show you a very simple compound interest calculator that, that I built in Google Sheets. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can get access to it so that you can run your own numbers. Now, as we get started, I, I want to make sure we're on the same page when it comes to compounding. So compound interest or compounding is simply just earning uh, money, not only on the, the amounts that you've invested, but also on the amounts that those investments have earned. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as interest on interest or earnings on earnings. So in a, a simple example would be a savings account and you invest say $1,000, it earns uh, interest in today's rates. It, it wouldn't earn much, but it earns some interest that gets added to your account. And then the next time uh, the interest accumulates, it accumulates not only on your original $1,000 principal, but also on the interest you earned the last time. And that just repeats over and over and over again. Same thing happens with a bond or bond fund where it generates interest and you reinvest it uh, and it continues uh, to grow or with stocks. And with stocks or stock funds, they actually kind of compound in, in two ways. If you have a fund or an individual stock that pays a dividend, compounding occurs when you take that dividend and reinvest it. But one thing that's nice about stocks is even if a company doesn't pay a dividend, they still compound. And that may be a little uh, hard to believe, but think about companies like Alphabet, which owns Google, or Tesla, or Amazon, or Berkshire Hathaway. These are companies that at least at the moment don't pay a dividend, but they earn a lot of money. They have profit, cash flows, and they take that money. And what do they do with it? Well, they don't pay a dividend to shareholders like you and me, but they reinvest that money back into the business to do more research and development, come up with more products and services, and that's where the compounding occurs. Now, keep in mind, there are some things that don't really compound, at least not in the way that we're talking today. Think Bitcoin or gold. They, in and of themselves, don't earn anything. They just sit there. That doesn't mean you can't make a lot of money. We all know uh, cryptocurrencies have made some people extremely wealthy, but these things don't compound in the way we're talking about because they're not an asset that in and of itself earns uh, anything. So with that in mind, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the compound uh, calculator that we're going to use today. And in fact, here it is. And I'll, uh, oops, there we go. And uh, here's what we're going to do as a baseline. Let's, let's assume that compounding didn't exist, that we couldn't compound our returns. And here's the assumptions we're going to use. Uh, and this is the calculator I'll give you access to. Um, in, in just a minute. We're going to assume um, a, an annual income of $50,000. This is for someone either right out of high school or college. And yes, you're saying, wait, wait a minute, someone out of high school probably doesn't make that much. Well, you're quite, quite right. Most don't. I certainly didn't. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that this person never, ever gets a raise. They work 45 years and they never get a raise. And we're also going to make it hard on them. We're going to assume they can never save more than 5%. So that goes right here. It's the most they can save, which comes out, as you can see, to $208.33. And by the way, some of these are red, indicating that we don't have to input anything there. They're calculated values, and I'll explain what these numbers are uh, in just a bit. Uh, uh, the green boxes are what we populate. And in fact, some of these, let me just quickly delete as we go, just make it a bit easier. And so we're going to assume 5%, uh, that's the most you can save. And at the moment, we're going to assume no compounding. You actually, we, a 0% return. How's that? That's not too good, but there you go. And we're going to do 45 years. This is sort of a typical traditional uh, working period, say from 20 to 65 or 22 to 67. And if we did that, um, we'll ignore this number for a moment. You can see, uh, well, we have $112,500. That's what we've saved. Uh, over a 45-year period, assuming a $50,000 uh, annual salary and a savings rate of 5%. We haven't earned anything. We've effectively stuffed this money under our mattress. There it is, $112,500. Now, I, I show you this uh, somewhat silly example so that we can really begin to see the real power of compounding. And that gets us to our very first of seven calculations. And all I'm going to do is add a return number here. We're going to assume we invest it maybe in a simple low cost index fund portfolio. And I'm going to assume a, a return of 9.8%. And you may say, well, where'd that number come from? Well, 
It came from Vanguard. As you can see on the screen, uh, a 80-20 portfolio from 1926 to 2020 has an average annual return of 9.8%. Again, uh, when you get access to the spreadsheet, you can assume whatever returns you want, but uh, I'm just gonna use Vanguard's number and we'll put it in here, 9.8, and uh, bam, there it is. Uh, to over two million dollars and this really if there's if there's no other takeaways from this video this is really the power so think about this the 112 500 is from saving that's from you know spending less than you make maybe making some sacrifices uh putting money aside we turned that into two million dollars what did we do well we we simply invested the money in frankly low-cost index funds during our working years we didn't work overtime to generate that. We didn't get a second or third job. We didn't cut back uh, even more. And we made all of this while we were sleeping, while we were on vacation. I mean, it was very, very little effort. The 112500, that's the effort, right? Spending less than you make. But it turns into a pile of cash if, and this is a big if, we give it enough uh, time. And so that's the real power of compounding. Now, I want to sort of start to peel back the, the, the layers on this just a bit to show you just how important uh, some of these numbers uh, are. So you notice we're saving for 45 years. Well, what would happen if we just saved for 44? So I'm going to make some changes to this calculator. I'm going to bring this number down and put it here. There's the formula. Don't really have to worry about that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is this number right here is what we use uh, for the time period. And so what I'm gonna do is just, just shave off one year. What, what would one year matter? Instead of 45 years, we'll save for 44 years. Well, it matters a lot. In fact, we can see what the difference is by simply taking this number and subtracting this number. By reducing our savings period from 45 years just to 44, just a one year difference, we lost almost $200,000 uh, by the time we retired. Yes, every year matters, which is why I stress that I believe everyone should be investing today, even if you can only afford to invest a few bucks a month. Now, that gets me to the third, uh, the third calculation, and I'm going to pick on Dave Ramsey a bit here. He's great at getting out of debt, but one of the things he believes is that you should not invest until you've paid off all of your non-mortgage debt. And it's a, it's a view that I just, I disagree with. And so for this third calculation, let's imagine that someone followed that approach and it took them, we're gonna assume seven years to pay off all of their low interest student loans. And so they didn't invest for 45 years, they ended up investing for 38. Well, that decision cost them by the time they retired over a million dollars. Uh, the numbers get silly big when you're talking about long periods of time and shaving off those seven years because it's those those last years where the compounding really kicks into overdrive all right and so delaying uh investing even relatively short periods of time will have a huge impact on the final outcome all right now the other factors matter too so let's take this away for just a minute and um We'll take this away and now I'm gonna copy this back over and what I want to do now is make a, a different assumption we're gonna keep it at 45 years but you notice I put 9.8 here so in this formula here we're gonna change that 9.8 this is the number here and we're gonna change it just one tenth of one percent that's it 9.7 well if we do that well we get a number that I wasn't expecting let me try that again I see what I did. We'll do 9.7%. There we go. And again, we can compare these two numbers. Just one tenth of 1% cost us 70 grand. And uh, so not, not a big difference in the returns and a, a significant difference in the number. Now, it might not be life changing, but personally, I'd rather have the 70 grand than not. Uh, but the reason I show you this is. We can't control what the stock market will do. So, you know, I've assumed 9.8 uh, over here. That's this number here. This number is 9.7. We don't know what the returns are going to be over the next 45 years. 
But it brings me, that calculation, which was our fourth, brings me to the fifth calculation, and there is something we can control, fees. A standard fee from a fiduciary, this is someone who's supposed to have your best interests at heart, a standard fee is 1%. So if returns were 9.8, but they, they took 1% off the top, that would give us 8.8 .8 returns on an after fee basis. Yeah, big numbers. You can see it cost us $600,000. That, that seemingly small 1% uh, fee makes a big, big uh, difference. All right, uh, that gets us to the sixth calculation. We've got two more. This sixth one is super important. You notice we've assumed a 5% savings rate. Obviously, if we work hard, we can maybe increase that. But what about if we have an employer uh, that matches some of our contributions? And so what I want to assume for this calculation right here, actually, you know what I'll do to make this a little better. I'm gonna move this down here. Um, and then we're gonna change this. Instead of, an, of, of, of a 5% uh, savings rate, we're going to assume that they match up to 3% of our salary, so it turns into an 8%. And actually, just to make this clear, I'm going to pull this out for just a second. So all we're going to do is we're going to increase our savings rate from 5 to 8%, but that extra 3%, we're assuming that your employer matches your contribution. So remember, this number is $2 million. We'll round it down. It's $2,035,000, but let's call it $2 million. What happens if we make this 8%? Look at that. It went from roughly $2 million dollars to $3.2 million, a huge difference. Now, of course, we could have created this on our own without an employer match, but it would have required some more sacrifice. It would have increased our monthly savings from, remember it was $208 a month to now 333. But with an employer match, and again, I know not everyone has an employer match, but if you do, that employer match is incredibly, incredibly valuable. By the way, it's just another reason why I don't think we should hold off saving even to pay off other debt, particularly if our employer matches our 401k contributions. I mean, that's just losing free money. We got to take advantage of that. All right. All right. Let's move to the, the seventh and final calculation. This one's really important. We're going to put the savings rate back to 5%. And we're going to make some changes here. And I'm going to actually change some of the calculators a bit to do this. But the first thing I want to assume is that we only save for 10 years. Now, look at that number, uh, 42,000. You know, we were looking at, at millions and now, you know, 10 years still seems like a long time, but we've only got 42 grand. That might be a little bit disappointing. And it is something that, that's worth noting. Uh, the benefits of compounding take time. Uh, it's slow at first. Most of what you have in the first few years, even the first decade, is largely uh, what you've saved. Yes, there's compounding taking place, but it's very small numbers. In fact, let me show you this uh, uh, compound interest calculator from investor.gov. I'll leave a link to this below the video. Here, we're assuming a monthly contribution of 250. Let me try to make this a little bigger for you. Nope, that's as big as it'll get. Uh, but here's what I wanna show you. 45 years, here I assumed an 8% interest rate, but here's the key takeaway. It's this, uh, chart at the bottom. The red shows our total value, which of course includes compounding. This greenish line shows just our contributions. And you'll notice for about the first 10 years, those lines are almost indistinguishable. They're right on top of each other. They don't really start to separate until around year 10 or 12 or even uh, close to 14 right here. And that's something to keep in mind. Compounding takes time. But once you get it going, the results are amazing. And that brings us back to this seventh calculation I want to show you. I want to assume that someone saves $208 a month for 10 years at 9.8% return, and then they stop. They don't save another thing, but they keep this $42,000 invested uh, for another 35 years. So how would we do that? Well, we can do this formula. This is the same formula that drives the numbers up here. It's just a future value formula. And we're going to give it an interest rate, that same 9.8%. We'll divide it by 12 uh, to make it uh, a monthly, right? And this is going to be for 35 years. So 35 times 12, because we're keeping things monthly. We're not going to contribute another nickel. So that'll be zero. 
but we're not starting at zero, right? We've got that 42,191. I'm going to make that a negative number. What do we end up with? Well, we end up with $1.2 million. Still a nice nest egg, even though we only saved for 10 years and let it, let it grow for 35 years. Why have I done this? Well, I want to compare this to someone who doesn't save their first 10 years. They wait 10 years, maybe till their early 30s. And then they start saving and they save for 35 years. What would that look like? Well, we'll use the same return divided by 12. We're going to save for 35 years. And we're going to save that same 208.33. What do they end up with? 751,000. And they have contributed a lot more money, right? Because they've contributed, we can calculate this. 208, well, we could just use this. They've contributed 208.33 per month for 35 years, 87,000. This person who started early, what did they contribute? Well, they contributed 208 a month as well, but they only contributed for 10 years, 25,000 versus 87,500. But their number, it's not quite twice as much, but boy, it's, it's close. And why? It's because they started earlier, 10 years earlier, and even though they contributed less, their money had a much, much uh, longer period of time uh, to grow. So there you go. Those are the seven calculations. I, I hope they show you the awesome power of compounding. It really is what will build wealth for us. Now, I promised you I'd give you access to the spreadsheet so you can run your own numbers. So here's the thing. I'm going to leave a link to this spreadsheet below the video. Please do not click the share button. Instead, go to file and make a copy. You can make your own copy, only you will have access to it, and you can change these numbers and run whatever scenarios you'd like to. Well, listen, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.